What an uh, what a what a claim to fame! I've been performing since the age of seven, you guys. Yeah. Uh, I feel like I need to justify that. I don't, because I think that's a really weird. Uh, first of all, a uh, round of applause for Will, who's been in seeing tonight. Isn't he great? Right? Thank you. Um, so the reason I put that on my website cause, is because I thought it'd be like a funny thing. Because when I was in seven, when I was seven, I did like a talent quest where I played the piano, and I thought it'd be like a funny thing if people were like, "Oh, he's been performing since the age of seven. It was just a primary school talent quest." But like that wasn't obviously given context to tonight. So you you probably thought I was much better at comedy <laughs> than I am. And I'm just right now what I'm doing is just readjusting your expectations. Uh, <laughs> Um, this is super cool. I'm so like happy to be here for the Green Lake Weekly and stuff. This is such an exciting gig. Usually in Sydney when you do like comedy gigs, you, you go, oh man, hey, how fucked is this? And oh, racism sucks. And everyone in the audience is like, no, we're rich and it's fine. Like everything's great. We have money. Go back to your shed. Like that's, you know. Uh, um, but uh, hopefully you're all as poor as me and uh, it's great, right? Hey! <laughs> I also, I don't know if it was like a, um, a, a, a deliberate choice, but I really like how they just bathed us all in red light, just <laughs> in case there was any doubt about political leaning. <laughs> if someone like a telegraph walked in like, yeah, I knew it, bloody, uh, it's bloody commies. Um, anyway, we should, we should get to the, the meat of the, of the issue. Oh man, it's just, oh. It's so depressing. This is the thing, right? You try, you try and make jokes about it, and then you just like you write for I don't know if you guys do this, but you just write about stuff, and you try and feel like, hey, it's funny, and you just like end up in like in a fetal position, crying, right? Because things are genuinely fucked, right? Like, and because I, I was worried, right? I was really worried that uh, you know, because there's a lot of comedians on tonight, and we're all kind of they were really good, and everyone's really really funny and stuff. And I was worried that like. By the time I got on stage, it was like gonna be, it was all gonna be dried up. Like everyone would have already like beaten it. To, but no, there's so much more to talk about, you guys. <laughs> Let's start with um this thing that happened today, actually. Um, well, the, the the kind of the current the current standoff we have with with, with the Indonesia over immigration, which is which has been ended today because ooh. I, it's 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 genuinely troubling, right? Like I, I I'm I'm not a white Australian, obviously, um, and I feel like growing up, like I had a kind of affinity with refugees and like with asylum seekers for no other reason than I than, than, than like that I wasn't white. Like I didn't I didn't suffer like that. I don't know that experience, but I just kind of had this affinity because of my own you know stupid brain that just kind of assumes knowledge, which is totally wrong, you know. But then th things like this happen uh, where. So I don't know if you guys, I assume you guys are a pretty politically informed uh, crowd, but the, the government, the liberal government, oh, it, just, it all sounds bad using that word, right? It's such a, anyway. Um, <laughs> it does, right? Like not just, put, anyway, it just, they, 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 so Operation Sovereign Borders is, 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 is what they've called the, the, the refugee, the, the plan to deal with asylum seekers, right? Operation Sovereign Borders. That doesn't sound like a policy. That sounds like a computer game, you know what I mean? Like it's like Call of Duty 7, Operation Sovereign Borders. It's like, it just shows you how like childish like the political discourse in this country is, you know, like, and, how, and how completely run down the whole system is, you know? The whole point of it is that they have got, uh, the Liberals have got, you know, the military to run our, our refugee program in terms of like naval asylum seekers. Like it's, it's, like it's terrifying, it's scary, right? When they announced this policy back in July, um, the ADA, like the Australian Defence Association, which is like the, the, which is like vaguely speaking like the, um, uh, you know, the, the army's kind of the, the spokesperson. They were like, hey, like refugees and asylum seekers is a civilian matter. We're the army. We shouldn't be enforcing civilian matters, right? Because because you know what that is? That's like that's like legitimately what a fascist dictatorship is. Do you know what I mean? Like, do you know what I mean? Like it's crazy. Like when the police are actually the military, when civilian matters are being enforced by the military, that's actually how. I, I feel like that was kind of sending a joke, and then you were like, "Fuck, this is actually like." The point, the point, the point of that is though that like the military came out and said like we don't want this job. You know, they were like, "Hey, we don't want to do this. This is not part of our remit. This is not what we want to do." You know. So they don't want the job. They're not trained for the job. You know, like getting the military 
to, to like deal with refugees. It's a lot like getting the Cronulla Sharks to do your tax returns. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, they don't want the job, they're not trained for the job, and unfortunately, there are going to be some unnecessary sexual assaults. Like, that's how it's going to... <laughs> Obviously, that phrase, unnecessary sexual assaults, I just want to be really clear about that. I don't want to imply that there are such a thing as necessary sexual assaults, obviously. Uh, because... And obviously it's hard to, because with the media, it's hard to, sometimes you like to victim blame, right? That's just how, you know, the media is. Oh, um, what else can we talk about? <laughs> George Brandis came out recently and said that they plan on uh, taking back, like, repealing the laws about hate speech in Australia, um, which is pretty full on. Like, it's going to be legal now to racially vilify people. Um, obviously, those laws didn't stop most people, right? <laughs> obviously, because Australia's a fucked up racist place. Um, but you know, I, I'm not, I'm not a freedom, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a, a free speech uh, absolutist. You know, I, I think, I think, you know, it's, it's, it, I think it's a really, you know, grey area. You know, obviously there are, there, there are arguments to be made in terms of like, you know, is political speech protected? Is racism political speech? I don't know, right? But I, for one, really look forward to vilifying George Brandis for being a white shithead. Like, I really am <laughs> looking forward to doing this. So without further ado, and obviously I know that these laws haven't been repealed yet, so let's just, let's catch this in the discussion of would it be illegal if I said this, okay? <laughs> are, are there any white people here tonight? No? Good. Okay. No? Good. Okay. Also, I just, I want you guys, to, I know this joke could really bomb, like I really know this joke could bomb, so if it does bomb, let's just all remember how much we've enjoyed the rest of the night. Uh, <laughs> All right, white people. <laughs> George Brandis, look, I'm not saying that all white people are pedophiles, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to make a list of, like, some people <laughs> and then let you guys make your own stereotypical judgments about that statement I just made, okay? All right. Roman Polanski, right? White, pedo, right? Um, Gary Glitter, white, pedo. The guy, the guy, the guy from, the guy from Hey Dad, white, pedo. Rolf Harris, yes. allegedly white, but he's not allegedly white. Obviously, he's white. Allegedly, pedo. Michael Jackson was black and then became white and a pedo. Like this logic is. And I want to be really clear, like, I'm not saying that all white people are pedos, right? I'm not saying that all pedos are white people, right? What I am saying, though, is a matter of stereotypes. If you're going to make kind of crass judgments about a race, a group of racial people, like, how many more white pedos do we have to find before it's okay for me to make jokes about how white people are pedos, you know? Like, because <laughs> here's the thing, right? Like, I'm Chinese, and, like, if I'm, like, driving a car down the street, and then I try and, like, park it, and as I pull into the curb, I, like, hit the curb, everyone in the car is going to be like, boh ha Asian drivers! <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, fuck that. Like, how many more white pedos do we have to find where I can just see, like, George Brandis with, like, a schoolgirl at a bus stop and just be, like, classic white pedo, you know? Like... Cool. Uh, thanks for getting on board with that joke. <laughs> Presumably, if you didn't laugh, it's because you're a white pedo. Um, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Obviously, that's, you know, a really sensitive topic, and I'm genuinely sorry for what is uh, insensitive. <laughs> All right. Cross that off the list. Um, I don't know. Do you guys think Australia's a racist country? Yeah. yeah. Oh, great. That's the only time that's ever happened at a comedy gig. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> no, mate, we're just proud. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm from the Sutherland Shire, right? Like, that's where I grew up. Um, some of you cheering, some of you booing. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Are you booing me for being from there? That's racist, you guys. We're not all like that. Um, <laughs> I grew up in, in the Sutherland Shire, and uh, I, I grew up in a place called Illawong, a lovely place, but you know, like, everyone's white. Like, everyone in the, in the place is white, you know? Um, in my mind, well, not everyone, like, uh, my parents obviously aren't. Uh, <laughs> not obviously aren't, sorry, my parents aren't. Uh, anyway, uh, I, grew, I went to a primary school there, uh, 600 kids in the primary school, only, only three Chinese kids, right? Three Chinese kids in a primary school of, like, you know, hundreds and hundreds of kids. And the three of us, we weren't allowed to, like, hang out as a group, 
because we were afraid that like everyone else would think we're trying to plan something, you know, like, effective, you know. I think a lot about racism, I talk a lot, I talk a lot about racism in my comedy and often like white privileged comedians will come up to me and be like, man, what are you talking about racism for? What are you talking about racism for? It's boring, it's hack. I'm like, no, you don't understand why I talk about racism so much. It's because, like, I'm, like, not white like you, you know, and dealing with the admin that comes along with being Chinese is, like, seriously 80% of my life. Like, that's how my life is. Like, I, when I make a new friend, I'm just going to always counting down the days until they say something racist, you know, like, when I, when, I'm, like, when I get a new job, I'm just, like, waiting for them to ask my papers and stuff. Like, it's really, it's full on. Like, this is not, this is not, like, this is, like, hectic, right? And I'm like, you know what I mean? Like, my life is, like, 80% dealing with the admin that comes along with being Chinese. The other 20% of my life is on the internet. Like, that's the only way to escape it, you know. When I'm anonymous, you can't see this that's going on, you know. <laughs> thought a lot about racism, you know, and what I realised is, it does, like, I know it doesn't make any sense. Like, I know that, but, like, some... I think the most eloquent, like, the most articulate way I can describe it is that my race doesn't actually define me at all as a person. I don't think any of our races define us at all as a person. Like, potentially, your culture will have some sort of influence over you, but I was born in Australia, like, I grew up here. I, you know, I don't do a lot of Chinese stuff, you know, like, I'm not, I don't speak Chinese, I'm like pretty terrible at it, you know? Like, like sometimes, for example, like I'll be in Chinatown, right? Like, fuck you guys, I don't live there, right? I just, I'm just, I'm just there like doing some network gaming or whatever. And sometimes like a Chinese person, they'll come up to me and they'll speak to me in Chinese, right? And then I don't speak Chinese, so they'll be like, oh, sorry, I don't speak Chinese. And then, then they'll just look at me really disappointed. <laughs> like, I'm the one who's fucked up. <laughs> like, mm. I'm like, no, you can't just assume because I look like this that I can speak Chinese. Like, that's super rare. Like, I, you can't. I feel like I'm wearing a t-shirt that's like, make your oriental inquiries here. Like, that's <laughs> a racist t-shirt. Stop wearing that t-shirt around. It's an offensive word, you know? <laughs> what I've realized is, in regards to Australia and racism, though, is that, like, the only way your race actually ever affects you is in the way other people treat you. The only way your race, not your, you know, your, your culture, but the only way your race ever actually affects you is in the way other people treat you, right? For as an example, I'm not like bigger and faster and smarter and stronger than white people because I'm Chinese. Like, <laughs> those things are incidental, obviously. Uh, Sometimes people treat you differently, right? Like, uh, the most heartbreaking example of this is when I was like 19 years old. A girl who I was dating, we dated for like six months, and at the end of the relationship, she, she sat me down. She was like, hey, Michael, I don't want to date you anymore because you're Chinese, right? I know, right? BT dubs, I grew up in the Shire, hey. Anyway, um, yeah, I know, like, hey, what is that? Like, that's such a weird thing to say to someone. Like, hey, I don't want to date you anymore because you're Chinese. Now, what's really frustrating about that is that I can't argue with that. You know? <laughs> like, if she was like, hey, Michael, I don't want to date you because you're selfish, I could have been like, hey, I'm not selfish. Remember that time I shared a sandwich with you or whatever? Like, you know what I mean? I could have constructed an argument. But if she's like, hey, Michael, I don't want to date you because you're Chinese, I can't very well be like, oh, you think I'm Chinese? What? I'm not Chinese. <laughs> oh, this, all of this? No, I'm not Chinese. This is just a really racist costume I wear all the time. <laughs> I'm just, I'm auditioning for a part in Breakfast at Tiffany's. Um, <laughs> some people got that joke, some people didn't, that's fine. Um, yeah. Fans of Mickey Rooney in the audience? I don't know. Um, yeah. What's re what else is really frustrating about that is that, like, it's not, it's not, like, hectic enough that I could ever, like, call the police about it. It's just, like, subtle racism that's always around Australia, you know? Like, and she's like, I want to date you because you're Chinese, you know? And let's be frank, like, I don't know what I was doing that was so, like, frustratingly Chinese to her <laughs> that she felt she needed to break up with me. You know what I mean? Like I said, I was born in Australia. I don't do a lot of that. It wasn't like I was just going around for six months just, like, being Chinese at her or whatever. <laughs> just, like, I don't know, dressing like a lion and banging a gong or whatever. Like, I wasn't... <laughs> I'm not like doing that. I wasn't just going around to farms, just like collectivizing farm labor or whatever. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, not. I just wasn't having controlling interest in mineral exports for six months. Like, I wasn't doing that. I don't know. Like, by the way, uh, that that line about farm collectivization usually doesn't get along. <laughs> I was like, what are you? What is that? And I was like, it's gonna go well tonight. It's gonna go well. No, it's gonna be great. Um, <laughs>
when I was um, I was down in uh, I was down the south coast uh, in that in, uh, yeah I was down the south coast it doesn't matter where I was and I was um, I did that joke and the audience were like Brr, and then I just like snapped and was like all right here's the history lesson that's there's no more jokes anymore you guys just have to learn about Chinese history now and that's what we're doing now I know you've paid money but I'm sorry this is more important than the jokes all right. Um, was like, oh yeah, also, just getting back to this ex-girlfriend of mine, and I know that I should have gotten over it now, but I haven't, right? <laughs> I hate that I have to explain it like this, but we dated for six months, and I was Chinese at the start of that relationship, <laughs> and my ethnicity didn't change. Like, it was, if we were to graph it, it'd be like, you know, uh, X equals 100, or like Y equals 100, I don't know, I'm not very good at maths, look. Um, <laughs> she met both my parents, they're both Chinese, the clues were there, you know? Like, <laughs> I, I, sorry, I forgot to mention at the start of that that um, oh, I fucked up this joke. I forgot to mention this girl, she was also Chinese. Um, <laughs> <laughs> How racist is that? Because not only is it racist, it's like super hypocritical, you know? Because not only was she Chinese, she was like more Chinese than me. You mean like I can't speak Chinese, she could speak Chinese. You know, like my parents were born in Australia. Her in China, that's like the Chineseiest place there is. <laughs> but the thing is, like during an argument, you can't start saying those kind of things. Because once you start saying those kind of things, it's a very short walk to saying things like, I grew here, you flew here, you know? And like, I don't want to be that guy. Like, I'm not that guy, and I don't want to be that guy. <laughs> I guess my point is, like, once you're arguing with your Chinese or racist girlfriend who is more Chinese or racist, like, the romance is really gone, you know? It's hard to come back from that. <laughs> Um, yeah, we talked about it a lot, you know, like, because cause this is the thing that, uh, like, white people sometimes don't understand it, like, you know, in a country like Australia where the majority of people are white, if you're, like, I was like, why would you want to break up with me? Why do you want to date a Chinese people? And she was, like, worried that, like, people would look at us, you know, two Chinese people were dating, and people would think that we're only dating because we're both Chinese, you know, because that's a thing that people sometimes say, they're like, ah, let's tell they, ah, look at them, they speak that, you know, they're, they're just connecting on that ethnic level or whatever, I don't know, like, you know what I mean? Like, they probably speak that special language, presumably Chinese. Um, but I was like, wait, you think I'm only dating you because you're Chinese? That's such a misunderstanding. Like, you've totally misread me. I'm dating you because you're willing to date me. That's why I'm dating you. <laughs> oh, man. Um, all right, I feel like I tend, I move tangentially away from politics. I'll go back there for a second. Um, I was, what, sorry? Capitalism. Capitalism. I don't actually know what that means. <laughs> like, I'm going to be honest. I just, I'm not going to like, pretend I'm smart, but I'm not. What does capitalism mean? Capitalism is, um... Oh, capitalism. I thought you were saying, like, capitalism. Like, yeah, <laughs> fuck the pills. Woo! Okay, I thought that was where we were going. Sorry. Capitalism. <laughs> just to know for anyone else wanting to heckle tonight, please enunciate your heckles. Uh, <laughs> it'll make the night go smoothly. You guys, like, I don't know, are there jokes to be made about capitalism or is it just like, hey, we live on a planet with finite resources and capitalism requires infinite resources and production and consumption, so we're fucked. Like, is that a joke or are we just, like, really sad now? You guys are just applauding your own demise. Like, we're all fucked. Oh, man. I have one joke about it. Okay, cool. Well, sure. It's a very intricate joke. Hi there. Thanks for coming out tonight. Do you want to... Hey, do you want to intro you? I could intro... Do you want to use the mic? It'll be... It's an old voice. All right. No, no. Don't worry, guys. I'm sure this is going to be great. What's your name? Totally get it. Uh, t t yeah, okay. okay, so I'm totally get it, and um, this is a joke you've all been waiting for. Okay, so about capitalism. <laughs> capitalism. There you go. <laughs> totally I really feel like you built that up too much. <laughs> uh, but thank you. Well, I'm really glad tonight's being filmed, by the way. Uh, <laughs> super cool. Uh, all right. Where were we? Oh, okay. Here's the thing I can talk about. Um, I don't know. Uh, we, I think we've been talking a little bit tonight about how crazy Tony Abbott is. Um, and here's the thing that happened to me when I was down, uh, down in Melbourne uh, a couple of months ago. I listened to the radio down in Melbourne, and Jeff Kennett was on the radio. Uh, Jeff, what a Tory shithead, right? Um, and he, yeah, someone cheering? Okay, cool. Um, and, and he was saying, he was saying, because it was just after the leadership, the leadership spill had happened, right? 
Um, and he was saying, like, he was really glad that Julia Gillard was gone, right? Because Julia Gillard had said the most offensive thing he had ever heard in the Australian Parliament, right? She was responsible for that. And I was like, this is going to be so offensive. Because I've heard so many fucked up things in the Australian Parliament, right? Like, what? Like, and we're going to cover them a bit. Well, just to recap, like when Tony Abbott, for example, as we already said tonight, when he said, Jesus knew there was a place for everybody, it's just not necessarily in Australia. Like, that's pretty offensive. And he's going to top that with this Julia Gillard speech, right? Or what about when he said, like, when Tony Abbott said that um, women should not expect to reach parity with men because of physiological differences. That's pretty offensive, right? So whatever Julia Gillard's going to say is going to be pretty up there. What about when Tony Abbott said, hey, it is not okay for a woman to refuse to have sex with her husband, right? That's so offensive. So whatever Julia Gillard said is going to be crazy, right? Here's what Julia Gillard said, and brace yourself because it's really fucked up. Julia Gillard said that Tony Abbott was a misogynist. <laughs> just like empirically observe a thing and then repeat it, right? Like how <laughs> dare she do that? Here's the reasoning though, here's the reasoning. Tony Abbott is not a misogynist because Tony Abbott has daughters. <laughs> I know, it's such a crazy argument, right? Because like you don't have to have made daughters. To, like, I can't even explain it, like, it's so crazy. What's the, is the, just, is the idea that once you've made a daughter, you're like, well, you're a woman, and um, I guess I can't hate any women now. Like, is that how it works? I don't know, right? Because you think of like, like what I'm saying is, not all fathers, not all fathers are feminists, right? Just ask my dad, for example, right? Or my sister. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I should have bailed out of that joke about 30 seconds ago, and I didn't, and I'm sorry. Um, all right, what else can we talk about? It's crazy. It's not just Abbott, though. Like, we live in a really, we live in a really fucked up political time in Australia. You know. It's, it's, it's the uncertainty that really worries me, you know, because because uh, for the first time in, Australia, in the Australian Senate, there are, well, not for the first time, but obviously for the first time in, like, the last 30 years, the Australian Senate could be controlled by, like, people who have, um, people who want gun liberalisation. <laughs> you went out brave on that one. <laughs> I feel like you've... Are you, like, the sole libertarian voice at the Green Week? You're like, yeah, lower taxes and more guns, woo! Is that? I don't know. I, I just... What's sorry? Oh, it was the, it was the comedian. I see. I understand. It's, don't worry, guys. It's in character. Uh, or are you? I don't know. It's such a convincing... Yeah. Um, yeah, gun visualization. Man, they, I saw one of these guys being interviewed uh, on the news um, just after the election. And a shooting had happened in America. You know? These are tragic things that happen all too often in America. And he made this argument that I feel like a lot of gun rights activists make a lot of the time, which is like, he go, they go, this is a tragedy, right? As though we don't know. Like, yeah, we know, right? He goes, this was a tragedy, but this never would have happened if everybody there was carrying a gun. <laughs> Just so we're clear, it also never would have happened if nobody was carrying a gun. Like, do you know what I mean? You can't solve the problem of gun violence by adding more guns to the problem, because that's the cause of the pro You know what, I, I, okay, anyway, yeah. Um, what other stuff shall we chat about? <clears throat> Here's thing that happened. There's a guy on trial in the States right now, uh, well, well, on trial. Uh, he got convicted by the Senate. This guy's called Jamie Dimon, right? I don't know if you guys know him, uh, but he's, a, he's like the CEO of um, one of the biggest banks in America, right? He's worth $500 million, right? That is so much money. <laughs> That is like more money than all of us put together forever, right? Like, I mean, actually, I don't know your lifestyle, but certainly, like, it's more money than anyway. Five hundred million, so much money, right? And he was convicted in the front of the Senate of like lying to the Senate about insider trading and whale trading, right? Like, he said, oh, I don't know what's going on, and then later on they were like, Hey, you knew exactly what's going on, you corporate fat cat. Like, you definitely knew what's going on, right? And they're worried. They're not going to prosecute him. They're not going to send him to prison because you can't send bankers to prison. Otherwise, there might be justice, right? But he was, <laughs> he was saying like they were saying like they're not going to send him to prison because they're worried that he's like the CEO of this major bank or of Ch Chase Manhattan, right? Jeff Morgan Chase. They, they're worried that if they send this guy to prison, it'll destabilize the markets and cause another global financial crisis, right? I know, right? Like your stunt size is great. It's fucked. It's so fucked. You know. 
But then I was thinking about it more and more, and I was like, mm, I don't know. Like, if I had like five hundred million dollars, which I never will, but if I had like five hundred million dollars, and someone like tried to send me to prison, you know what I'd do? I think I'd just like on the next level, like, hey, Michael, you have to go to prison now. You know what I'd do? I think I'd just like buy the prison. I just buy the prison because <laughs> they're private institutions in America. I just buy the prison, right? And I just be like, hey, that prison that I'm going to, I own it now. Hey, that's what's up. You know, that's, I can do that because I'm rich. Because the rich have all the power. That's why I have money is the power, man. It's fuck, right? I'm just gonna buy the prison. And you're like, oh, Michael, but oh, you're gonna you're gonna be all alone. How are you gonna leave the prison? You're gonna have to stay in the prison. I'm like, I don't care. Right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna buy all the land between the prison and my house, right? <laughs> He's gonna start erecting fences. I'm gonna be like, hey, you know what? That land, that land is all prison now. That's all prison. That'll count as prison. And my house is all prison as well. That's, I'm gonna go play my prison Xbox. You know, hang out with my prison butler. Like that's just how it is. I'm just gonna be. And they're like, oh, Michael, Michael, maybe, maybe you're gonna get all sad and lonely though, because your friends and family can't visit you in prison. Like I don't care. I've got like, I don't know, like 480 million dollars left. I'm just gonna get all these prisoners and get them all to have like plastic surgery and acting classes, right? And make them pretend to be my friends and family, yeah? But unlike my real friends and family, they can't leave because they're in prison. So like, do you see how it's like, you know, prisons are great is my point, <laughs> if you're rich. Um, all right, let's end on this. Um, I, I, I just like, it's, it's hard. Like, I like talking about racism, but I feel like I don't, I don't get the brunt of it, you know? Because like, being Chinese is like, actually pretty cool. Like, there are legitimate disenfranchised people, and I'm like, you know, 5% of what other people experience, you know? I don't want to pretend like I'm some sort of martyr. I'm not, right? But um, bearing all that in mind, here's, here's like a, a thing of small racism that happened to me um, about a year ago, or about, about 18 months ago now. I was at the, uh, like, Sydney night noodle markets, um, the Hyde Park night noodle markets, right? And I didn't really want to go, but like, a friend was like, hey, let's go. And I was like, oh, I don't like you. Anyway, so <laughs> went to the City Night Noodle Markets, and I'm waiting in line. Just to set this up, right? I'm waiting in line. Uh, you, I, you guys know what it is, right? So like you go there and you can buy noodles, right? Like, um, and <laughs> the clues in the day, obviously. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was a patronizing. Like, hey, do you guys know what noodles are and markets? Well, can you imagine that at night? Anyway. Uh, so I'm in line for the Night Noodle Markets, and there's a sign up here that says all the noodles are like, uh, $16. Well, the noodles are $16, right? And the guy, uh, just to set this up, the guy, uh, the lady in front of me, is she's in front of me in the queue, and she happens to be white, right? And the person serving the noodles, he also happens to be white. Now, the fact that he's white, that's not technically a problem, but I am kind of sick of them coming over here and stealing our jobs, you know what I mean? Like, that's... <laughs> cool. Um... <laughs> I'm always worried that people will take that joke at face value and think I'm just like some horrible bigot, but you understand it's a satire. Anyway, okay, we're fine. We're fine. I usually have to caveat that, but I feel like we're in a safe space. Anyway, so there's a sign up here that says all the noodles are $16. All the noodles are $16. Now he, uh, he's the serving noodles, he takes down the sign, crosses out $16, right down $8, right? All the noodles are now half price, right? I'm back here being like, fuck yeah, right? I love noodles. I love a bargain, right? Finally, something is going right in my life for once, right? Now, uh, just remember, the, the woman in front of me, she goes, oh, she's in front of me, and she's white, and she goes, oh, $8, half price noodles, that's such a great bargain. And the guy who's serving the noodles, now remember, he's still white, right? <laughs> he says this, $8, dollar, $8, I give you a good deal. <laughs> Just so we're clear, he does the Ching Chong voice at an Asian food festival. What? That's brazen. That's very brave, right? Because then he's like, oh, I can top it, right? Because she responds, she goes, ah, ha, ha, and laughs because she's a fuckhead, right? <laughs> He goes, as she like leaves and takes her noodles, he goes, oh, I can do better. Then he goes, thank you. And bows, right? You know, I like a Chinese person would. I don't know if you guys have ever been to a Chinese restaurant, but they're always just bowing and saying, thank you, like that. You know? I don't know if you guys have ever been to a Chinese restaurant, but people are unlikely to say thank you at a Chinese restaurant, right? Anyway. So he goes, thank you. And he closed his eyes. I don't know if you saw it. He closed his eyes for authenticity, right? <laughs> And then I'm like, he comes back up and opens his eyes, and it's just me. Hello. And that's a really, really awkward moment, right? 
because in that moment, like, I've caught this guy being a massive racist, right? And he's caught me being, like, Chinese, I guess. Is that what he's, I don't know, is that? Oh, man. Um, I feel like uh, my time is kind of coming to an end, yeah? So I feel like I should get out of here. Um, oh, okay. oh, cool, okay, I've got time to do one more thing. Uh, what's all right? Staff longer. I'll oh, stay on longer. What do you mean? What, what happened to this guy? Okay, here's what happened. He, here's the fucking. I don't usually tell this part, but this is what happened, right? He sees me, and then he just like overcompensates and goes, oh. So remember, he's just gone, oh, thank you, and come back up, and then he sees me, right? And then he overcompensates and just goes, oh, oh, good day, mate. How are you? Like, <laughs> Shithead. Like, I know I can see you. Did you really think I was going to be like, oh, sorry, that, that, that must be the other guy. You all the same to me. Like, I don't know if that's... It's crazy, right? <laughs> I don't know. What else should we talk about? I've got some time. Um, I got called a mean word recently. I got called an F word. Um, and I was... I'm, I'm, I'm not gay. Not that it matters, obviously. Um, but I got called that word, right? And what happened was... I was standing on the a street corner in Glee, and I was eating an ice cream. You know, pretty gay. What? No, 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 right? It's ridiculous. How does that make no sense? Anyway, so, and this guy drove past in like a, one of those utes that has like four seats, like a back and front ute kind of thing, and he went out his window, and he goes, oh, and he like says it, right? And then he just drives off because he's brave, right? <laughs> and I was like sitting there being like, what? Like, what has just happened? Like, I don't, I don't know. Does this kind of thing still happen? I mean, I, like, I didn't realize this kind of stuff like happens all the time because it hadn't happened to me before. Like, he's stories about this kind of thing. That's my own ignorance, you know. Like, like the, I forget that other people's experiences are real and like, you know, because you only just internalize your own stuff, right? So drives past, and then he kind of and drives off, right? And what I realized is, like, as he was driving past, is he was in the passenger seat, and the person who was driving was like, it was a woman driving the car, right? And I was like, man. Can you imagine if those guys were on a date? Like, and he was like, oh man, I really want to go out to a, like, watch a movie, or like, and go dancing, or like, and go to dinner. But before that, why don't we just drive around Glebe and just yell offensive terms at people, because romance, right? So, and then as he's driving off, I saw that it wasn't, uh, it was a date, because in the back of the car was like a kid's seat with like a three year old in it. I was like, what? Like, that's no way to raise a child. Like, that's, you can't do it. And then I was like, I started getting angry at him, but then I was like, man, sometimes, like, my dad, when I was growing up, would do, like, shit that he didn't want to do just because I wanted to be like, hey, dad, let's go play Nintendo. And he'd be like, oh, I don't want to play Nintendo. Can you, like, maybe it's not actually him. He's just, like, some disgruntled father, and, like, the kid's just a raging homophobic three. And it's just like, man, fucking, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> All right. I haven't done that joke for a very long time. Uh, <laughs> I feel like, I feel like, um, I feel like I can't end on that. Uh, <laughs> all right. What we thought we were going to say. Um, all right. Let's, 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 I'll tell you this very quick story. I think I've got like three minutes. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you this story. It's not political at all. Um, it's just a fun, it's, it's a fun story. But I, yeah, hang on. Let's wait for the plane. Um, all right. So like, like I said, I live in the Shire. And uh, this story is a couple of years old. Uh, but it's, 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 pretty, it's a pretty good story. So, like, co uh, a couple of years ago, my dad, uh, he works at Westmead um, Kids Hospital, right? He's, he's, he's the head eye surgeon there, right? And um, about, about four, three years ago now, about three years ago, he was catching a train home from work one night from Westmead down to where we live, we live in the Shire, right? And he had to kind of go through, it was like 11 o'clock at night, he had to go through, kind of through a dodgy area where a lot of white people live. And it's <laughs> not serious. Anyway. It's, it, it's, it's like you know, 11 o'clock at night, and these two 16-year-old kids get on the train, right? And they start lying off my dad, and then one of them kind of comes up to my dad and like pushes him. My dad's like, oh, no, I don't want to do this. Oh. And then one of them like shows him a knife, and then he just goes, give us your fucking wallet, old man. Give us your fucking wallet. I don't know, comedy golf, right? <laughs> my dad, right? My dad just kind of really calmly just stands up and just goes, think about your choices, boys. <laughs> How badass is that, right? <laughs> Look, apparently when my dad gets stressed, he just turns into an anti-gambling ad, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> this, 
this kid is like, he's like within arm's reach of my dad. He like brings out the knife and like, like brings the knife to my dad. My dad just grabs the guy's hand and just like dislocates his elbow, right? And the guy like falls to the floor, right? The second kid comes at my dad and my dad executes what he describes as a cheeky palm strike to the guy's face, shattering his eye socket, right? <laughs> And it was, it was crazy, right? Now, obviously, I have mixed feelings about this story because I'm really glad my dad, like, didn't get hurt. But, like, you know, it does nothing to the stereotype that all Chinese people know Kung Fu, obviously. <laughs> and, you know, like, I'm just saying that my dad should think more about, like, you know, broader racial relations when he's getting mugged, you know? <laughs> anyway, so my dad bails these two kids up, takes them off at the next station, and then, like, calls the police. And the police, like, ah. Oh, We'll be there. So my dad has to like wait there for like half an hour for the cops to come. My dad's just like, don't you move, right? <laughs> and like, mm -hmm. and when the cops finally come, he, my dad has to go to the police station with them all, and then he's got to fill out like a police report and stuff. Now, um, that story is like, you know, is pretty good so far. What makes this story like genuinely one of the most interesting things that has ever happened is that like, uh, I don't know if there are any eye surgeons here tonight. Uh, I don't know if my dad's in the crowd. Of course not, he doesn't support this. Anyway, um, <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't done this joke in a long time, so I'm sorry if I'm laughing, but I haven't done it in a long time. It's it, it really amusing me, because anyway. <laughs> but a shattered eye socket is like a particularly tricky surgical procedure to fix, right? So much so, there's only like a handful of surgeons in Sydney who can perform the procedure. <laughs> So if you're like 15 or 16 and like legally a minor, you're probably likely, and you get like a shattered eye socket, you're probably likely to be sent to like Westmead Children's Hospital, which is like a public hospital, <laughs> a public healthcare, where like the head eye surgeon is likely to like have to perform this <laughs> operation on you, right? Like for real, like my dad goes into work the next day and he's like looking at his roster and he's like, huh, I recognize that name from the police report, that's interesting. But then he's got to meet the kid's parents. Like, that's an awkward discussion to have, right? Like, hello, um, my name is Stephen. I'll be your son's surgeon today. Uh, your, son, your son is suffering from a blunt force trauma to the front of the head and a shattered cranium. How do you know so much about this? Well, funny story, actually. Uh, so my dad walks into the operating theatre, right? And the kid's laying there underneath the lights, and the lights are shining down the kid. The kid can't see anything because the lights are shining. My dad just kind of walks into the operating theater and then turns to the, to the anesthetist and just goes, don't worry, I've got this. <laughs> turns back to the kid and my dad's like wearing his surgical mask and just walks up over the kid and just goes, remember me? And just gasses him, just gasses the kid. <laughs> prison now. Uh, anyway, um, thank you guys so much for supporting the Green Lake Weekly. Good night. Yeah, please thank Michael Heaney.